Greetings. Hello, world. How are you doing? My name is Winston Duncan and I am the host of The Winston Show. Yes, and this is the second episode that we've got for you in the year of 2022. So we're on podcast, okay? So you can go and check us out through Spotify, Anchor and iTunes. And we're also on YouTube. And I'm really excited about today's guest because you're gonna, we're going to go deep today so we're doing a bit of surgery so y'all just take it easy and take a breath go and get a green tea go and get some water sit down relax and we're going to really get into it now I believe that the universe sets up things to bring you in line and bring you into a path of of people that are supposed to help you along your journey and it was my friend's birthday and I was on my way home and I can remember the time because I looked at my phone it was 1 20 a.m And I got in the car and turned it around and I was listening to a radio station. And as soon as this man started speaking, he just commanded my attention. And it was really interesting because what he was talking about was the dynamics of a family union. And when a mother shouts at her child, how that disorientates that child or how that uh, throws it out of kilter and the, and the child puts his hands over his ears not because he doesn't want to hear what mummy's saying but because of the frequencies in which she speaks to him and ultimately I feel that that can be really damaging it's a subject that I'm highly interested in so today's show um, we are calling disruptive dysfunctional family and we're going to get into that in just a second so my guest today uh, his company is uh, Ancestral Essence you can find him at www.ancestralessence.com you will want to make a note of that website because he's absolutely amazing he specializes in African spirituality and it's there's so much more to it I think that doesn't even encompass what we're about to get into but we had to have something to tell you so ladies and gentlemen it is my pleasure to interview this gentleman for the first time Edison (laughs) Ajibanji. The close not bad not bad oh did I get it wrong see I was practicing it's no crime. It's all fine. It's Go like, for it. Correct it. Tell me. Edison let's get you up. Ag- it's Edison Agbanji. Ah, oh, there you go. I think I put oh. an I in there somewhere. Ag- Probably. Ag- and, Ag- and we was practicing, wasn't we? We was, we was, but it's easily, you know, if you're not familiar with that name, then it's easy to uh, make a mistake. But it's no crime because ultimately it's just, you know, it's just a name. It's cool. Cool. Forgive me, forgive me, but welcome to the show. It's a pleasure Thank to you. have you here. So for people that have never met you, never heard of you before, could you tell me or tell us, tell the audience, what do you do? Okay. Um, oh, because you said my name, which is great. Uh, my company, Ancestral Essence, is really based on reintroducing the ancient concepts behind African spirituality into a modern day frame. We've sort of got lost along our way and we've become religious, not understanding that our ancestors were people that were, you know, very connected to the deeper dimensions within other worlds and other worlds within ourselves. And they were trying to build their spirit, their essence, their understanding of reality, as opposed to just follow what other people have said and what I've told them to do. So we, through my years of studying, through my years of going through uh, different experiences with my ancestors, uh, learning how to speak to my ancestors, teaching people how to speak to their ancestors, we've come up with various courses uh, across these years. We've got three different levels of courses which basically reintroduce you to yourself uh, to empower yourself and no longer have any other religion by yourself. So we've been working on that for quite a while. And, um, you know, all I've really been trying to do is to make sure that we get our message across and people become comfortable with themselves. That's what I do. So, yeah. Okay. So it's, it's quite a lot. It's a lot. And in these... Uh, practices 
I guess there's different levels. Today, we're looking into the immediate level, but I can't help thinking that when we're getting into ourselves, it reminds me a little bit of Buddhism. Am I way off? Buddhism, yes. People have made comparisons to Buddhism. Uh, what I realize is the ancients were the ancients, and they were probably a one sort of mindset that had traveled across the world, but as they traveled to different places, they took on their environment and came up with different stories. So if we was to take it all the way back to the nub, we would find that there was a group of people that didn't have a name, that just had an understanding. It's just that the African side of it has been sort of brushed under the carpet and everyone's been comfortable highlighting everyone else. And our okay. one is not to say that it's better than anyone else, because I don't want to get into no ego concept. But when you really understand what's behind it, you realize it's something which empowers you, not the story. You're not looking to focus on anyone or anything. It doesn't require no special building to do anything. You are the building. You are the altar. You are the essence that essentially you're trying to master. So it takes you back into that and peels back the layers that other people have put on you so that you're not living your life. You're just living a variation of theirs. I love that self-mastery. Okay, cool. So today's topic, we are talking about the dynamics of disruptive uh, people, disruptive families, dysfunctional families, dis dysfunctional people. And it's a huge topic to sort of get into, but let's start in terms of raising your voice and arguments. So let's start with, you know, the, the children have done something wrong and the mum, all of that, I'm not going to be sexist here, is just literally standing there screaming at that child, what are you doing? Why are you doing? This is not the way you behave. Let's talk about the, the, the dynamics of that. Obviously, the, the person is going to be in some sort of trauma some way because they feel that they've lost control of that particular situation. But let's sort of unpack maybe the impact of the children first. Let's start with what happens to the children first when they get these kind of tones and frequencies shouted at them. Okay. Um, first line we always love is a throwaway comment by the parent is called by the child. The first people that the children look at as their guides, their gods, the people that they, you know, if you look at a child, the first thing it does, as soon as it do, look, um, it's born, it looks into the parent's eyes. It's constantly looking to the parent's eyes for reassurance that everything is okay, everything is all right. Its strength comes from initially the parents being in balance, being in control, and the way in which the parent behaves becomes the testimony of the childhood of that child. So therefore, in situations where you've just described, where the parent has through various opinions, beliefs, ideas, ways things should be conducted, have had a clash within them based on expectation and actual deliverance of, on that expectation. So what happens is we say your temperature rises, you become hot, you become heated. And after a while, you lose your temper. That's where the whole concept comes from. Once you lose your temper, like a kettle, what do you do? You release steam. You release what's in your mind to reduce your temperature back. So therefore you literally shout off everything that you have going on within you. You feel better, but the child, poor thing, didn't have the outlet that you had. They will have to now take it out on somebody else. So you've literally poured out everything onto that child. Now, the thing is, the child doesn't hear your words as much as they feel your tone. Yeah, I could say something to you and it can either soothe you, even if I'm saying something terrible, it's my tone of voice. It's like someone offering you a cup of tea. Is it a warm cup of tea you can drink 
Or is it a boiling cup of tea that someone is literally pouring down boiling water down your throat and burning your chest as you're hearing it? People don't really appreciate that uh, we say our stomach, no, our mind is the stomach to our experience. So when someone is speaking to you, you're actually consuming their words and you're actually processing it in your mind. And as such, based on the way that your words are cooked will determine how that person consumes what you're feeding them. And if it's done in a way that is hard to stomach, even mentally, often the, the child, based on the pain, because they don't know, it's not the sound or what have you as such, it's not what the parent is saying they're trying to avoid, it's the pain within themselves trying to process the temperature or the tone of what the per the parent is actually using. So this is where the damage is being done. This is and powerful. And you're in training the child to actually react in that way in those situations. So you have to understand the same way parents have been trained by their parents. It's not an actual sit down child. Today, we're going to teach you something. It's your behavior. The example that you set is what, is what you're training the child with. And the child is seeing that example, not through you, like you say, sitting them down. You may sit them down, tell them off, and you're enjoying yourself because you're releasing the steam that you've created in your head, but you're not appreciating that what you're doing is poisoning the child. Because the child is gonna carry the poison and the memory of your act and they're not going to have an outlet to express that. So they have a choice to either internalize that, which will then impact them um, physically over time with the buildup of the actual, without going into the whole concept of, you know, um, you create emotions that are either uplifting or poisonous, acidic. And when okay. you're in a state where you're in that state, you know what I mean? It, we could go on, but it, it goes but to the point. Where there's a lot here. There's a lot here. So I want to just break it down. In, in, and I love the fact that you said the mind is the stomach to the experience. I've never, ever, ever heard that before. And I completely do understand that. Like the womb is uh, the, the home of creativity. Now, I I, <laughs> I feel like, the poor child you know in terms of the poisoning and stuff like that but think about the old school generation whereby you know they grew up in the Caribbean um, or they grew up back home in Africa and they're set in their traditions you listen to me and that's it you do what I say and not what I do and that's it and a lot of I don't I don't know about um, maybe the African culture but I know more the Caribbeans Everything is with a glass of rum, is what I'm trying to say. A glass of brandy, some sort of spirit. <laughs> uh, and and, and uh, to me, personally, I think there's alcoholism around our elders, particularly the men. Mm. And it translates, and it's not everybody, but it translates into verbal abuse. And that is never, 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 never okay. So let's talk a little bit from the male perspective of, mm traumatizing a, a child with just I'm talking to you normally now and then how dare you what did you you're talking to me you can't talk to me now. and it becomes a thrill a, stri a trill sound where you're literally just like oh my god oh my god oh my god but if you've been through all of that through your life or at your 40s and you're kind of used to it how can somebody, I know it's a layered question, but I'm sure you're getting no, it's right. okay. I'm, I'm familiar how, with it. It's okay. How can somebody create a, bo a boundary around that if they're their elder, their uncle, their dad, their grandpa? How, where's the protection? So I guess this is a two-layered question. The first element is, is the dynamic different when a male shouts at a child? And the second element is, how do you protect yourself from screaming, literally, whether it's a man or a woman? Okay, first of all, let's talk about the alcohol. Yeah, alcohols are what do you call them? They're um, sedative, they're stimulants. They essentially, when you take them in a little amount, they calm you down. 
they bring down the thoughts, it introduces a new poison into your system and the blood in your system goes, that's why the concept of lightheaded is the fact that you introduce the poison into your system. It goes to your stomach and the blood that you would normally have operating your thoughts in your mind would then basically circumnavigate and go to your stomach to deal with the poison that you've now um, ingested. So therefore you feel lightheaded because you have a lack of blood cells actually in your head. That's where the concept of it is. You don't have the relevant strength, ashe, what have you in your mind to be able to function your thoughts correctly. So that's where it is. Now, sometimes to go back, not too much to that concept of the child, when the child is being shut, um, screamed on the parents. What happens is when you are poisoned as a child, you create a personality you create a way in which you're going to conduct yourself from now on which is going to protect you in those situations you build up the events that are around you and this personality has been created to protect you from those events so you'll find someone in one minute that is very mild and mannered but as soon as something happens they are triggered and the next personality comes out and starts to defend them in whatever way it has the power to defend them. So let's go back. You have someone that's taken some alcohol. You have someone that as a result of some alcohol, either another, they, they initially, they're quite cool, they're fine. They're in that steady period. They know the level of alcohol they can consume. As soon as they take just a bit more of that, they've now opened themselves up to a personality that may have been there in their past to protect them from when they were younger to now come forward. This personality now comes forward and its only mission is to defend that person in whatever way that it can. If the person is of strength, they will use violence. If they're not of strength, they will raise their tone to try and create some sort of scary sound that will deter the other person from moving forward in what that person may think might be frightening to them. Now, you also have a big issue where people are suffering through society, through whatever, of their own identity and its actual value. So a lot of people are walking around, masking a raid with as much money, clothes, what have you as they can to just sort of put an outward cover on their inner insecurity. So therefore they are in that situation where anything that appears that might attack that inner, inner insecurity that they have, they have put an armor of whatever they can afford uh, and whatever they have in order to defend themselves. So in a situation like that, you've got a man who probably doesn't have the best internal opinion of himself. Yeah, that's in a situation where even amongst children, he has to force his presence and his power. He can't accept that this is a child and they should be guided, not scolded but such as his inability or maybe his lack of control of himself from when he was in that child position, he still has a personality that jumps out and defends him without giving a regard for the actual person or environment that he's in, even if it's his own children. He probably later on, once that personality is gone, turns around and wants to say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm this, I'm that. But there's a saying that we have, that when you become anger, angry, you become possessed. And at that time, you don't really have no memory of your friends and you have no um, love for your friends. That personality will come out and defend you irregardless. And then later on, it's once that personality is gone, you often hear people saying, oh, I don't know what took over me. What happened there? I was someone else for a second. Yeah. And then after that, they want to either give you a gift to show you that they're really wrong for what they did. But over time, they become prideful. 
they're fed up of apologizing all the time. So they start saying that this personality is now them. It's not them, it's just the personality that they've allowed to take over them. But that is so damaging because you know what? There was a scenario that I was accosted to and the individual, the particular individual went out and brought her children a gift after this um, huge screaming tirade you're standing in the middle of the room because I was trying to understand it and process it and think like a part of me was looking outside of myself thinking this isn't right and I'm looking around the people inside the room crying and I'm thinking this person has some deep issues going on to stand in the middle of a room and scream at the top of their lungs like throwing candy out of the pot or whatever, the rattle. And then to say this behavior is not, not good. And then for, to take the children that clearly didn't want to leave, to take them with, with her and then go and buy gifts at Asda. I, 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 I can't comprehend that. Isn't that a, a message to the child that, if someone does something wrong or says something wrong, material things are going to make it better. Is that not what... Break that down some more, please. Well, it's difficult because it's at stages. The person who has allowed themselves to be taken over by a personality within them, because we all have many personalities, that personality has come out and done its damage. Now, once that personality is left, that individual is embarrassed by their actions and they want to buy back. The word forgive really means that you're going to give me the respect that we had before. I'm going to do an act to you. You're going to feel some way towards me. But in order for me to buy back the respect I have, I have to now give you a gift. I have to give you something so that you trust me and you treat me like you did before. Isn't that isn't that manipulation? Oh, and I can hear a little bit of uh, banging. I don't know if the microphone's being touched. Oh, sorry, There's it's a little bit of a, a banging the there. Um, but yeah, it's a hundred percent manipulation. But in honesty, this is there's the saying. I remember in the movie The Matrix where she said, "The version of you that is asking is not the version of you that made the decision." And this is How? where we start. Let's break that down. The version of you that is aunt skin is not the version of you that is making the... That made that decision. You see, in moment to moment, we change who we are to accommodate the situation and environment that we're in. So the version of you that may have asked the question might not be the version of you that is listening to the answer. Got it, got it. Tell me a little bit more about these personalities and do they have names? Because for me personally, I feel as if I have a part of my personality that is flip mode. So you talked about this on the radio and I was thinking about what you said. And I think that it's flip mode because the environment that I came out of as a child was was there was shouting. Um, uh, screaming was used as a way to control and manipulate me as a child and I think that's why I went out and became a, a, a marijuana addict and was addicted to getting high and getting out off my face any which way because I, I just didn't want to hear the noise you know you see I'm trying yeah you see I'm no, trying to say to, yeah. yeah to to medicate the pain so I'm, I mean, I, I've stopped smoking five and a half years ago, so that's something I'm dealing with. But it shows out in my other isms, as in, you know, workaholic is workaholic uh, and overeating. Mm. But coming back to the centre, uh, these personalities. So from since listening to you on the radio, there's a personality in me that's flip mode. There's a personality in me that is like the calm, uh, ah, meditative personality. Um there's the professional personality and then there's the entertainer and when I'm the entertainer and I'm you know maybe doing a song or doing a workshop or mm. talking to hundreds of people there's another personality to me that is very withdrawn quiet and would rather not say anything yet because of the energy and the essence when I walk into the room and you were saying the sweat up my skin mm. people are drawn to me to want to speak I might just be silent and just be there 
and then someone will just come over and I'll be just like not today but there's something in that vibration within me that you know people want to talk and tell me their problems so let's talk about these different personalities and how we name them I know you don't like to label stuff but (laughs) how can we identify them and realize when they're coming up okay we'll try and um summarize them as best as possible this is fascinating stuff by the way no worries no worries um let's go back every minute of every day um we are actors in our own play so effectively you are moving into a room to group of people to environment and you decide on how you're going to play or the how you're going to act in that situation so some of it and most of it you control so if you're at work you have a personality that you develop just for work so it's one where you memorize all what's needed and only at work do you fall into that character yeah but if everyone saw you at work they would only know you from that personality now when you're at home with your family you're a totally different character, your tone of voice changes, how you communicate, the things that you laugh about, the things that you're interested in, another personality altogether. Then when you're with your partner, again, you're not going to be the same as you are with your family, you're going to be a different person. And then with different groups of friends, different situations, we're constantly creating personalities. Now, these things are great because we can control them and we can bring them back. These are things that are retractable and expandable. So essentially, the the craziest thing is whoever would meet us in different circumstances would see the same body, but they say, who the hell are you? They wouldn't recognize us because we would be a totally different personality. All of them are us but we are like the die concept not the dice but the die where there's six sides to the one cube same cube but six different sides chances are there's many more different sides to us these are not the problems this is how we conduct ourselves so when someone says i want to get to know you they're really asking about the aspect of you that they know not all the other five different aspects And the problem is, if you are not in control, you're in control of those aspects, you're fine. But the problem is, there's going to be personalities that you created that you didn't want to create. These personalities were only created to protect you in situations. They weren't there to basically uh, show you in a great light. They were there to protect you against things that you fear. Now you have society constantly giving you an educated personality so based on how much you memorized all the stuff at school you have a version of yourself that based on what they told you be proud of yourself you passed all the exams you're sitting there walking around like you know what i've got all these qualifications i am somebody in a system that you didn't create but that's another story all right so you have others that didn't pass those exams And as a result, their personality when they're in certain environments is of a less confidence nature because they didn't pass those exams. So therefore they demean themselves or put themselves in a lower vibration because that's what the society externally has told them. Now they don't necessarily control this personality, but it's there. So we're in situations, go ahead if you wanna. Yeah, because I'm just trying to break it all down. So, so all right, I'm hearing what you're saying is mm. we have a work personality, which is like, good afternoon, how are you doing today? Oh, nice to meet you, my name's Winston, how can I help? Thank you. That's the work personality. Then we've got home. Wow, wow, I'm a bit doing easy enough. Yeah, all right. Because that's where you should feel relaxed and you mm. can do a bit of, you all right, mate? How you doing, mate? You all right? Yeah. Should we go down to the pub, mate? Yeah, mate. Uh, all right. Uh, and then you've got the partner, which would probably become a bit more effeminate and just say, hey, you okay? You good? You good? So this is what we want to just give some demos about these different personalities. Thank you. And then we've just got the friends uh, zone where it's like, hey, God, you all right? You right? Um, and then you spoke about personalities that we'd rather not 
would be there. So for example, you see me, I'm a kind of person like this, yeah, I'm cool. What addiction has taught me over the years is that I need to not be so hot headed, I need to not be so uh, aggressive, I need to observe. And that's why I can notice crazy makers making some madness. So when I sit back, observe, I'm a watcher, I like to see all of these things. But there's a thing where you push me and then it's this, no, we can't. I mean, I don't know if it's to do with the fact that I'm a scorpion, I've got a sting in my toe. I don't know if you, you do cover astrological signs or anything like that. But there's a, a section, there's a button, there's a switch that this is actually not going to happen anymore. This is a boundary and it's no. And you could say whatever you want, but it's still a no. And it's a no with a smile and it's a no being a complete sentence, you know, because I, I, I'm not entertaining that. So how can we improve upon personalities like, um, or characters or the personalities that may be a bit jealous and possessive? How can we improve on personalities that are aggressive and shouting? Sadly, let's go back with your bit at the beginning, asking about the parents. These personalities can actually be educated to help us and protect us in situations. Sadly, the parent shouting becomes part of the education for that darker personality within their child. And all the actual movements and shenanigans of the parent, if they're manipulative, becomes part of the framework of that personality that that child has. Situations where you're one to 16, so ultimately you don't really have much control over your financial position unless you start working really early and still that's not enough to take care of yourself i'm not speaking because there might be people that have but generally that's not the case so in those situations you're at the mercy of the balance of your parents and in that sense you are building personalities to help you cope coping mechanism personalities ones that literally oh i hate this i hate this you see people going through so many different ways in which they had to endure very negative toxic environments for a prolonged period of time so therefore this person now has a great actor that appears like everything is all right but once you start shaking behind the 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 curtain you start seeing personalities come flying out like whoa where did you come from who's this who's that and you watch within yourself and within your partner or within your environment people just changing into all different kind of characters and all kind of realities and you're like whoa who are you what am I doing here and this is all part of the protective personalities that this person has that they might not have control over because they were developed when they were younger at the time they didn't have the wisdom to develop them with balance so therefore they pop up and the person reverts back to almost a childlike face you say oh man what you know you turn into this petulant child that literally that i want sense. my way i want my way i because the personality was created when they were a child and, and i think that's the that instance mindset you nailed it you nailed it I want my way I want my way that was the instance because if you're standing in the middle of the room screaming la, 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 you, you you literally are having a meltdown some sort of break that something's not right something isn't right there and you're saying I want my way I want my way so then how do we detach from toxic people well the more you know you realize it's not them the problem that you have is when they can't control that personality that has now taken over them. And that personality has only a couple of missions. One, it's going to try and create a distance between you and that person. Because what it's always trying to do is to ensure that it has that person under their control more often than not it would rather that they're more upset than not because it gives it a reason to exist. 
it needs to exist. So it needs awkward situations. It needs scenarios. It needs a reason to be angry. And it's hypersensitive. It has so many rules of how everyone around them should behave so that it can be triggered into necessity and comes forward and starts arguing its position and its place. The other thing is it doesn't know how to love, but it will demand love. It would demand your obedience. It will demand that you behave a certain way all the time. It demands that because it will tell you that it's all about love, but it can't love. It can't love. The last thing is it has to win. The only time it's happy is when it's winning, when it has the last say, when it shuts down the situation, because it was only built to protect. So as it was only built to protect, its only mission in the end is winning. And the only time that it's in love or it's happy or it shuts the person down is when it's getting everything it wants. Other than that, it's gonna make the person miserable and everyone is around them trying to poke them up so that their vibration, like you were saying as well, the way you think extends beyond your skin. It vibrates into your environment and it creates an auric field attracting similar like energies towards you. So if you're in a peaceful state and you're contemplative, people are going to feel that and come towards you. And you're going to have more of a peaceful time even than you're keeping your mouth quiet. But those that aren't, they're the ones that seem to go out every day and tell you about how someone was rude to them in some sort of way. I love that. Say, I love oh, that. Oh God, what happened? I went there and this person started arguing with me and this and that. Because that entity wants to shine in a negative way and bring as many opportunities so that it can come forward and show how powerful it is in defending you. I, lo I love that. I mean, I feel quite emotional hearing this because it's lovely, first of all, to see a man express himself in a healthy way and a man to educate themselves, which, you know, is not intimidated, you're comfortable in your skin and you want to share the knowledge. And this conversation can go into so many uh, different dynamics and different aspects and, and, and so on and so forth. So before we, you know, begin to wrap up, uh, I, I want to kind of look at the person now, um, uh, we understand that if there, if you're a child, uh, the way that your environment is set up, you're not going to have much power over it, no. but it will define your personalities as you've grown old, older. And there comes a point, maybe when you're 18 plus or you've moved out of home, that you're going to have to take responsibility for now developing your character into shaping it, molding it into what it should be or to be more balanced or to not continue the patterns of, you know, alcoholism, screaming and, and stuff like that. So I want to now look at the perpetrator. And, you know, if somebody's listening onto the sound of our voices, what would you want to say to this person that recognised themselves in this interview to change, to ignite change? What would you want to say to that being? Uh, this is a difficult one. I only say that because people hear you according to the personality that they have listening to you. So if it is them in a calm state, that personality will be able to hear what it is that we're trying to say and can recognize that that is something within them that they need to look at and they need to change. If it's the actual um, protective personality, it's going to dismiss everything we're saying. So that's a load of rubbish. Don't follow that because it's going to do whatever it can to stay in control of that individual. So that individual has to be ready to hear or to change. It's quite an interesting process for them to actually get to the place where they can shut down the need for that protective personality. You know, um, courses that I cover literally, uh, you know, encourages you to go back to that time 
when you was a child, when that event took place. But we don't let you just go there by yourself in your current fragile mind. We teach you how to be able to um, walk with your ancestors, walk with uh, your army of energy that will allow you to feel comfortable within dangerous places within you. The, the biggest trick that they don't tell you is you're not living your life, you're living your memories. All you are is a collection of memories. That's the reason why even though an event took place years ago, you're still taking medication for it today because those memories are still playing within your mind as a jigsaw puzzle that wants the final piece to make sense so that you can put the jigsaw puzzle away. But if you don't get that final piece, it carries on reverberating the same vibration within you, trying to look for an answer. And without this answer, it's gonna stay in your body like waste product that needs to come out. Your body's gonna keep bringing it up and saying, look, you need to get rid of this waste. We need you to keep thinking about this thing so that you can find a way to disengage it so that it no longer has any power within you. So therefore, it's a slightly more involved process to try and disconnect someone who has one of those personalities there. But they need to be ready. They need to really want to do it. And then I'm sure people have many ways out there, but in what we understand is you, there is a process. You go back to that childhood, but you don't go there as scared as you was then. Remember that child exists within you as a memory. The fact that you know we could go into it, how you create every single memory and you store every memory in your mind. So everything you've ever seen, you did that. Everything you've ever created, you processed and made that. So therefore you stored it within yourself and now it's stored within yourself, that storage of that memory is a poisonous one that your body wants to get rid of so that it can find balance and peace in itself. So it's going to keep bringing it up until you eventually get to that point you can deal with it. That's beautiful. I want to give you a virtual hug if I can. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go, please stay. Uh, but there is going to, we are having a part two of this interview because I knew that when I was going to bring you on the show, uh, you know, 45 minutes is never going to be enough because there's just so many layers and I think that, that there's there's so many gems so welcome welcome if you're listening in this is the Winston show and I'm really excited to be here with Edison he's from ancestralessence.com and he's really breaking down about us taking responsibility for the different personalities that we have that are out of sync that are out of balance and literally need healing we haven't talked about that word today but healing is is a possible way in which you can improve yourself and to be better and if you know somebody that is dealing with these issues and and and, and challenges in a disruptive dysfunctional family then we need to address it and to begin to talk about it not to raise our voices but to begin to have a dialogue and an exchange where we can come together for the better for the good because if you're shouting over there on the left you, it's being felt somewhere around the other worlds do you know what I'm saying? It's being felt across the world globally. So we need to bring this, this, this balance in. So tell us a little bit uh, about your courses and how they can help align. So you've got a course coming up in May 2022. I That's believe right. they're 12 weeks courses and you go deeper into different aspects of how you can align your personality, how you can, uh, uh, you know, have a sense of self-development. So take a um, next couple of minutes just to sort of break down the courses and how you can help people that are further interested in working with you. Okay. Um, let me just clarify a few things. Um, it's a 10-week course, but it's what we refer to as our foundation course. And what we're really trying to do within that is to um, bring back all what the ancient ancestors used to actually have as common understandings, what our parents knew before we were introduced into different religions and traditions um, of how we conduct ourselves and how we essentially um, become, you know, more self-empowered, self-autonomous and free-thinking people. Um, Ten-week course, first week, 
we start to explain what is ancestral connection because the most connect, uh, most um, relevant thread through all that we're doing is letting you know that these ancestors that you speak of are not some new religion to pray to. They're not some sort of abstract reality. They are the voices that you are continuously communicating with within yourself the whole time. So we really want to break that down so that you start to understand that you've never been alone within yourself. You've always had a guiding voice and to trust that guiding voice, because if you do, you'll find that you tend not to go wrong. How many times have you said, you know what, I heard that, I should have just followed my mind and I didn't? We really want to get to that point where you start to see that that voice is not just some abstract thing, it's something concrete you can communicate with. Second week, we go into the, we, we touch on religion, but really just to have you explain the origins of it, not to go into bashing it, just to show why it was introduced, how it was introduced, and what is ultimately created within you we need to sort of break up the story that you're holding on to so that the third week when we introduce you to start speaking to your ancestors, that your mind is clear and open to such an experience. Otherwise, you're gonna be referring back to your programming and having a situation where you're saying, oh, I'm voodoo, I'm this, I'm that. And you're speaking about you. You're not speaking about someone's belief of what you should do. You're talking about your essence and your essence has no name and has no tradition. It's just you coming into this world and we'll explain that. Fourth week, we start talking about how you clear off your energies because we're constantly thinking. Like I said, you think and as you think, you radiate from beyond you. And as you radiate, imagine when you're scared and fearful, you're radiating into your skin. So your skin is holding the vibration of that fear. And over years of accumulation, you find yourself not very um, you know, sedentary, not be able to move because you're constantly um, covered in years and years and years and years of painful thoughts. So we show you how to start clearing that out making yourself lighter and putting the power of you doing things like baths into your own hands and not having to go and pay absorbent money for someone to give you something that you already have. Yeah, week five, we teach you about your house. Clear your house because you're bringing in energies from outside all day, every day. Whenever you meet someone, you're not realizing you're doing an energy handshake with them. So whatever thinking, thoughts, feelings they have is now actually merging into your energy field and you're taking that energy back home, going home, sitting on your bed, now putting that person's energy on your bed. And then you're starting to wonder why you're having nightmares and all different kind of things. So something we cover week six, we go into your mental spiritual health because ultimately people miss the point where if an illness is a lie is moving around your body and it's growing having children spreading that means this this illness is alive it's a thinking being and when someone says um, we can't cure you it means that they can't defeat the entity they can't defeat the illness which is not just an illness it's a thinking energy so we start to have you start to realize that you're much more than you've been led to believe and what is going on within you is other beings moving within you not just you you have to take control of your being because if you're the king of the castle you decide who survives and who doesn't in that castle week seven we go into sexual spiritual health and start explaining that ultimately you physically getting involved with someone there's the old saying isn't it there's recreation where you're having a child with someone and you're having sex for that reason or recreation the same word just spelled in a different spelled in the same way but with a whole different understanding where you're having sex for recreation you're accumulating a lot of people's energies within you and as a result these energies are fighting for control over your being we start to explain the true um, not tr our perception of it. We're not, we don't have the egos and say this is definitive. You would have to listen to it yourself and see whether it resonates with you. 
yeah we go into that twin flame and all that kind of stuff and explain that you ultimately chose your partner before you got here you probably chose more than one partner that's why your body is going to remember someone even though you don't consciously remember them and generate a vibration in you even though you don't realize why we hate we go into programs because sadly folks we're living in a very manicured program all the way from when you was a child someone had to make sure that you didn't learn to think for yourself and they gave you a structure of reality which they wanted you to um, put the frame of your mind so that you only grew up in that reality your frame is the frame that they gave you all that stuff about rocking the cradle the the mother that rocks the cradle rules the world mm, is it is it is it the one who designed the cradle of your mind really rules the world anyhow week nine we go into past lives into past life debts into the reasons why you came here and start having you understand you didn't start here you started in earlier times you started in older times you've come here and visited here many times and essentially who you are today is to balance who you was yesterday and then week 10 we go into you learning to speak your own original language from your planet of origin i know everyone's like oh planet of origin but i came from earth did you <laughs> Yeah, how could all the children around the world have personalities beyond what their per parents don't if their parents created their personalities? There'll be aspects of your parents, but there's actually an aspect of you that was born here but wasn't created here. When you see those children doing their goo goo gaga, it ain't goo goo, it ain't gaga. They're actually using terms from where they come from to describe the objects that they see and then you have to wipe their mind clean and then give them english so that all of us now have a uniform way of expressing ourselves but we don't appreciate how much of our identity we lost in losing our language when you start to understand that you can only see what you can say then you understand that your language is much more important than you ever imagined. If you only speak a certain language and they only have certain words, you only see the words that you've been taught to remember. So that means when someone says spirit, if all you have is the word spirit, you can't see them. But a child will be able to have many words for that object and be able to see other objects as a result of that. But we explain how the mind works, how it uses language in order to see and understand what's happening around you. And there's so much more. So that's just the foundation because we see that as the basics. It's not basic at all however it's the foundation because the stuff that we go on to do otherwise um, requires that at least you have a grounding in that um it's i know there's a load of people that said oh, i've had this experience and that experience and that experience and we can explain all of that but unless you know how to bring those things on command and you understand why you are having those experiences then our foundation course literally gets you to that point Excellent, excellent. Well, it's a definitely an in-depth course. And um, for those that have attended the intermediate, there are uh, just the, the beginners, there is intermediate and advanced as well. So I am going to say the website again, it's www.ancestralessence.com. And today <laughs> we've been listening to Edison Aj Banji. I get that right. It's right. You're getting this. I'm getting, getting it. Every time, All every right. Time. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Um, you know, share his uh powerful insights around the disruptive, uh, this uh, the disruptive dysfunctional family unit, and um, this is just part one. So we are going to dig a bit deeper in in uh, part two. So definitely look out for that interview. But thank you very much for being my guest today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Vincent, it's been a pleasure from my side as well. Thank you very much 
I look forward to the next one. Indeed, indeed. All righty. So this has been uh, the Winsome Show. And I always, there was something in me that always wanted to, to just speak to different people that do different things in and around the world. And I'm following that vibe. And it's like, in my head, I think, oh, gosh, am I not busy enough as it is? But it's not even about that. I think it's about sharing knowledge and infinite wisdom. And if we can help to put you on the path and begin to for you to question things around your life and why they're not working and that you can begin to look in the spirit of, well, I think Jill Scott calls it the spirit of discernment. If we can do that for you, then at least we're giving you an opportunity to heal, to clear, to, to move on. And there's just so much that happens to us in the human experience that it's very important that we can begin to express ourselves and be the best version of ourselves that we can so uh please do go and like my facebook page it's uh www.facebook.com forward slash uh the winston show and there's uh, some other interviews that we've had up on there as well so you can go into the archives and see what is there just for you and uh, make sure you you know you tell your friends and you share this uh, podcast or youtube whatever you're hearing this uh, show on then do please go ahead and share it and um, you can also check out the work that I do at www.confidencecoach.com for those people out there that are interested in telling their story and writing the book and getting the word out there thank you very much for tuning in and we wish you safe travels peace <laughs>